Hey everybody, it is currently May 21st, 2009, and in this video I'm going to be doing an overview of Windows 7. Uh, the particular version of Windows 7 that I'm running is Windows 7 Ultimate 64-bit. This is the uh, release candidate uh, valuation copy, build 7100, and I'm just going to be showing you some of the cooler parts of Windows 7 and some of the, uh, the nice things that it can do that makes life just all that much easier. Um, Windows 7 is basically uh, the same as Windows Vista, just it's a little bit different graphic-wise. Um, the way stuff is laid out is a little bit different, and it also runs a lot smoother. Even though this is only a release candidate, it's technically above a beta. It's still a beta, really, but it's more of a, I guess you'd call it a delta. But uh, regardless, it's running a beta of Windows 7 runs better than a servers pack one copy of Windows Vista and um, it's kinda sad but right here we have the little CPU monitor uh, CPU and RAM and I have my CPU overclocked to 3.0 gigahertz uh, per core and then I have my RAM overclocked to 1 gigahertz and um, all the gadgets you can right click and just go down the gadgets and they'll be right here and you can just drag them on as you go and there's a there's no sidebar in Windows 7 so you know the gadgets aren't stuck over here or something they do click to the edges so if if you see when I drag it here it goes and then clicks to the edge so you can attach them to a corner or even the side of another program sometimes but uh, of course you know they're okay ish I guess I really only use two CPU monitor and the weather app but uh, other than that, that's just about all I use with the sidebar functionality, or gadgets, I guess. The um, the way that you change the screen resolution is slightly different. Uh, you go in like this, and you actually see the monitor, and it's supposed to look, you know, pretty and new and techy instead of just a brick that says 1 and a brick that says 2. Uh, it picks each individual one, and you can go in and manually pick whatever resolution you want by dragging instead of uh, going through and picking uh, one after the other or something like that. And it also shows you all of the, if it's a widescreen monitor, it goes, hey, this is widescreen, this is widescreen, this is widescreen, this is widescreen, and this is widescreen, although that's not widescreen. That's just the lowest one it has. But uh, regardless, that looks really nice. Now, one of my favorite parts of uh, Windows 7 is its new toolbar design, or taskbar, I suppose you'd call it, where you have the capability to pin things to the taskbar. Like right here, this is a Firefox icon, and I have it pinned there. It's not open. As you can see that these ones have the little white uh, clearish thing around it. Um, and this doesn't. That means that it's pinned there, but not open. Now if I click it, it'll open up Firefox. Uh, now if I want to open up another Firefox, I can either right click and go to Mozilla Firefox, Mozilla or however you pronounce that, or I can hold shift and click it and it'll open another one and another one. Now you might also notice that things when they uh, maximize they zoom up and zoom down kind of like uh, that of Mac OS X. Now uh, another thing that's really awesome is you just hover over it and it shows you the different versions or the different windows you have. So let's go on to this one and we're gonna go to YouTube go on to the next one and we're going to go to I don't know um, let's just go with some random website uh, wikipedia dot com slash fish and we're gonna leave the other one on the home page so now you know let's say you're on your desktop and uh, you only have one monitor let's say if you wanna check out you know you're doing a report on fish let's say you hover over here it pops up, everything else disappears. You can't see it, but on my second monitor, all my aim and stuff just minimized. Uh, it shows you whatever you want, and you go, oh, all right. Then you go over to this one. So, like, let's say you're on this one for yourself. La, 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 la. And you want to check the other one. You just go read, and then go back to what you were doing. It's very convenient, especially when you've got multiple windows open, because then you can just go through and click through them. And then you can go, you know, oh, well, I don't need this one. And I'm done with the fish report. And there you go. Now, uh, as you can see, that now that all of them are closed, it remains pinned there. Now I'm going to open up a notepad here, 
throw this over here, and you'll see that it showed up right here. Now, if I close it, it disappears. But if I open it up, I right-click, say pin to the taskbar, close it, it's there because it's pinned. Now I can move this over here or in between here or whatever. And you also notice that when there's two or more windows open, it shows up in these little tabs. So if I open up one, and if I open up another, by holding shift and clicking, it'll show up with a little tab. Click another, another tab, click another, and it'll show up, and it'll just keep going. And then it'll get smaller, and eventually it'll just turn into a line that goes up the screen. But now if I just hover over it, it'll be like, hey, which notepad do you want? And they just kind of stacked on top of each other here. But let me just spread these out here to uh, illustrate what I'm talking about here. Alright. So now you've got, for some reason, like 17 notepads open. And instead of going, no, 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 and like having to minimize them to get the ones behind them, let's say, you know, there's a whole bunch of them that are in the foreground, there's some that are behind there that you can't get to. Hover over it, and you hover over, let's say, this one. All of them disappear, except for it. This one, 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 any of them. You go up, oh, don't need that, close it. I uh, don't need you, close. I uh, don't need this one either, close. And then, oh, that's the one I'm looking for right here. Click, and that one brings that to the foreground. And then when you're done with that one, you go to this one. Click, brings that one to the foreground. It's very, very convenient. You can right click, you can uh, close all of them. And then if something's pinned, you can right click and unpin it. Overall, that's very, very nice. Um, another thing that changed is they've added some new things, such as uh, paint is different. There's actually a capability to use different brushes now. It's still very meh. But uh, you notice if I go into the default brush and I'm drawing, let's say, I don't know, whatever this red is. I, let me make the brush larger. When, I, when you draw a line, it looks riggedy, and then it actually softens the edges. I kind of need to zoom in to show you that. The edges are very blocky, and then it softens the edges once you draw it, which makes it look a little bit better. And there's also the capability to make predetermined shapes. Also, the information or whatever you want to call it um, from going Windows pause break or right clicking uh, your computer and going into properties which this is uh, just your system basically is different and uh, if the rating no longer goes up to uh, 5.9 like Vista did this one goes up to 7.9 obviously accounting for the fact that there's newer hardware and uh, just about everybody including myself hit 5.9 on everything and uh, I need to evidently rerun this, but I'm not going to do that during a video. And um, this particular version of Windows, the, the RC1, did not come with Windows Movie Maker. But however, I do have... Oh, go away. I do have Windows Movie Maker. Uh, I'm going to do a video later on how to get Windows Movie Maker 6, which is the version from, um, the version from Vista working in Windows 7. It's really not that hard. You have to know a little bit what you're doing, but uh, I'll explain it in the video where anybody that has Windows 7 can do this. Now, the Windows RC, if anybody wants to get it, uh, you can go to, I believe it is, uh, technet.com, and it's still on the front page. Click right here, scroll down, Pick whether you want uh, x86 or x64. In this case, I do x64 because 64-bit is better, and I have 64-bit processor and all that good stuff. Click Next. It'll ask you to sign in, and it'll give you, if this wants to, you know, go, it'll ask you to sign in, and you do that. Eh. And it'll give you a key, and uh, you can click download now. Oh no, everybody's going to steal my key, which is free. But uh, yeah, so 
Overall, I'm running Windows 7 as my main operating system now. It is absolutely phenomenal. I love it. It's very nice looking. Um, you can go into personalization and uh, set it to different versions of Arrow. You can have it set it so that it changes your desktop background every two seconds or every couple hours. Just it is very nice. Uh, I can't wait until it's actually uh, full release because I'm sure they're going to add more things. And they have uh, some new tools in the accessories. Like there's one, it's Math Drawler or something like that. Uh, here it is, Math Input Panel. Uh, you can be like, you know, um, 7. Oh, that's supposed to be a 7. Oh, now it thinks it's a 7. Err, die. Alright, so I could be like, you know, Pi. No, Pi, damn it. No, Pi, damn it. That's not, I don't even know what that is. Oh, we, yeah, we'll take that. <laughs> but yeah, um, so there's some, there's several new, uh, tools that are throughout, uh, the accessories, snipping tool and things like that, where you can take little bits and pieces of stuff uh, just the overall user interface is a lot better it's very similar to Vista anybody that's used Vista much you'll you'll notice it uh, but it allows you to do things differently uh, the calculator also looks different as you can see uh, it's just different looking but there's a statistic calculator a programmers calculator a scientific calculator and a standard calculator just like before uh, this one evidently does binary and hex and even octo, which is cool. <laughs> it gets rid of the 8 and 9, that's funny. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that uh, that just about wraps this up. And um, my next video is probably going to be uh, the terabyte hard drive review. And then after that, I'll do the uh, informational video on how to get Windows Movie Maker 6 working. Now, in order to do that, you're going to need to have your hands on a copy of a Vista computer, any Vista, um, because you're going to need to get the files from it, which are right here in my part. Uh, I don't know if it's legal for me to, like, upload these to anybody. I'm not sure. But, um, just get your, uh, get yourself Vista computer, get the Windows Movie Maker program file, copy it over to your Windows 7 computer and I'll show you how to do it and you don't even have to install anything you just take the files right off your desktop and I just double click here and there it is so yeah uh, be sure to check around for those videos in the next few days and uh, thank you everybody for watching be sure to comment rate and subscribe and uh, I'll see you all later oh, sorry a few things that I forgot to mention here going back uh, editing or going to start editing I realized I missed uh, two things and that is, uh, oh, uh, for instance, if I take, uh, let's just say iTunes right here. Uh, if you want to full screen it instead of clicking this button, you can simply drag it to the top and let go. And iTunes is weird and it doesn't let you drag it down. But uh, let me just actually, you know what, I'll just open up a notepad since I've been using those. So drag it to the top, drag it down. So you can resize it to whatever you want. And then full screen, not full screen, full screen, not full screen. And then, of course, I can drag it over to my second monitor and throw it over there. So it's really convenient. I can reach over to my second monitor, grab, pull, throw over here. Instead of minimize, move, maximize, minimize, move, maximize, it's rip, slap. And uh, for people with smaller monitors uh, that don't have two monitors even, you can attach it to the side. And uh, in this case, I can't attach it to this side because this side keeps going. But uh, I attached it to the other side of my monitor and I can bring it over and then I could grab another one and attach it over here and whatnot. And uh, the second thing that I forgot was if you press this little spot right here, it will show your desktop. So, you know, you have this open and then you have, you know, iTunes on top of it and then, oop, uh... I just maximized iTunes. And you have iTunes on top of it and a bunch of crap. You just go, oh, so that's what that is. Okay, boom. 
just wanted to uh, throw that in there. Sorry for skipping that in the video itself, but uh, yeah. So thank you everybody for watching once again, and I'll see you all later.